Hey guys, if you're a Microsoft 365 user, you don't wanna miss this. Microsoft's recently rolled out some exciting new updates, and in today's video, I'm repacking all the latest features, improvements, and changes that you need to know. For those of you that don't know me, my name's Nick. I'm a Microsoft MVP. Been creating content here in the channel for the better half of a decade. Let's go ahead and kick things off, starting off with Microsoft Teams. Okay guys, before we dive in, just a quick reminder, I do always supplement these videos with a blog post in the description of the video. You can check out for more helpful links about more information about these announcements, video tutorials, and things like that. So be sure to check that out after you watch this video. Getting started though, we're gonna start off with Microsoft Teams. This first one's more of a security enhancement for brand impersonation protection in Teams chat. Many of you might not know this, but there's been a proliferation of attacks via Microsoft Teams chat and it is attackers kind of impersonating other users and tricking them into either downloading some type of malicious payload or using them to download a remote access tool like a team viewer and then downloading it themselves to compromise either the user or the device. And so Microsoft's implementing some default impersonation protection that gives the user more of a heads up and a warning. You definitely wanna educate your users about this and have some awareness there. But you can see in the screenshot between the tag that's in the left-hand column and then obviously the giant message that they're going to get here for the warning should be helpful in trying to prevent these attacks. This will happen mid-November as far as the timeline of the rollout. Speaking of security, if you guys are interested in running a free security assessment against your tenant, definitely check out a tool that I built called Cloud Capsule. You can get to it at cloudcapsule.io. I'll link it in the description. But effectively here, all you need to do is go in and add a domain and click on start assessment. You'll consent to the permissions and then you'll have a nice security assessment come back in just a few minutes. This spans across all the facets of Microsoft 365, including Exchange, Teams, Entra, and more. So be sure to check that out and run a free assessment. Okay, so the next one here is this new calendar experience. Definitely a little bit ambiguous at this moment in time, given how far out this is to come. So no screenshots or anything like that yet, but it's really, I think, kind of trying to mold together the experience you get in the Outlook calendar and the Teams calendar, which has kind of been disparate, but they've also added a lot of features for remote and hybrid work that I think they're gonna to combine together here as well. But timelines on this one will be mid-January, be complete by late January. Next one here is for our macOS users. This is looking at the default browser that's open with a link that's shared within a Teams chat. And today it defaults a default browser they would set, which might be Safari, but this allows you to configure that default browser. They could do so as well. But then whenever they launch that, they can have a more integrated experience, more single sign-on effect with that link if it's a document, something like that, versus having to re-authenticate again, which is their experience today. This will happen late October, be complete by late November. This will be the screenshot though that showcases what the user would see if they clicked on that link and their default browser was something other than Edge, getting them to try to download that as a managed browser. Next one here is for Teams Premium Licensing for Town Halls. You can see in the screenshot here, this is giving capability for all the members and attendees on the call to be able to chat within the experience there of the actual event. Previously, this was only available to the organizers and the presenters to be able to chat, and they were the only ones who could see that. So I like this just because it's a little bit more of an immersed experience, get, gets others to talk to each other there. This will happen mid-December and be complete by late December. Next one here, if you guys are familiar with the intelligent meeting recap that is either in Teams Premium Licensing or Microsoft Copilot, they're extending that functionality beyond just an organized meeting you would have on your Outlook calendar into some ad hoc meetings, maybe where you call just one other individual, as you can see in the screenshot here, or maybe it's part of a group chat. It's something that maybe you want to get that same AI intelligence behind the transcript recap that it performs. It's probably one of the most popular features, I would say, of the AI related SKUs today. Timeline on this one's mid-November, be complete by early December. Next one here is also for Teams Premium Licensing, but it allows you to create this frosted glass effect with your logo. So much like if you were to blur your background, you know, within a meeting experience, you're also able to add your own branding in there and it automatically can capture your logo and create this background for you. 
So it's nicer than just doing the blurred background. This is actually GA today, so you can experience this if you do have Teams Premium Licensing. And include a link in my blog post for more information on how to set this up. Shifting into Microsoft Outlook here, we're gonna start off with Microsoft Outlook for Mac. And this is giving and extending the capability we already have on Windows today in Outlook, which is integrated with Defender for Office 365, where users can report a phishing email or junk email there, which goes into the admin center on the security admin side for us and this is something that's super helpful you know just get users in that motion of being aware constantly about phishing attempts and being able to help train the model right that's going on within the tenant to look for those types of events to better capture phishing attempts that's coming to them this is also ga today so if you have mac users or you are a mac user uh, should be able to see this within the outlook experience this next one here is related to new work location sharing options this is extending from the kind of flexibility that Microsoft's been providing over the past few months for remote hybrid work. You can extend and kind of set your location of where you're working for that day, whether that's remote in the office, and then subsequently drilling down into what building or what desk are you sitting at today. And um, this will give them the ability to set what others can see within the organization. This will happen late September and be complete by late October. And this leads nicely into the next topic, which is Microsoft Places. It's a new app that Microsoft's come out with. It's technically been in preview for a few months now, but it's taking all these concepts that I just alluded to that they've been building over the past you know, six months, nine months or so, which relates to how do we operate in a remote and hybrid workforce? How can you optimize still meeting people in the office and scheduling that out or making the most out of a co-working space? And so this is a lot of tools that are going to be natively built into our existing apps. I like to think about it like the to-do app that's in Outlook. It's a similar experience where you'll have Microsoft Places. It's part of your left-hand nav that you can click on, and it should be able to help you with coordinating you know, when to go into the office, how to schedule employees, and things like that. I'd be interested to see more about how that all works, um, especially if you obviously are in a remote or hybrid workforce. It is included with your base level licensing, at least the core subscription, like a business standard, business premium. So there's nothing additional you have to do to purchase this at this point in time. And this is supposed to come out mid-November. Shifting into SharePoint here, this first one is for approval workflow within a document library. This is something that's integrating with Power Automate on the back end. We typically did not have this before in something like a SharePoint list, but as you can see in this example, it's giving us the ability in this example to basically look at an approval for hiring. So we're looking at candidates here to be approved from maybe management or HR within the organization. So it's a pretty cool example that they use there. I'm sure you might find others where you might have documents that need approval from other individuals within the organization. Timelines on this one, though, this will probably early December and be complete by late January. Shifting into the 365 apps, this is a big announcement here I think we really need to pay attention to. Many people just get caught up and get behind on events like this, but this is the end of support for Office 2016 and 2019, which is less than a year out at this point in time by the time you're watching this video. And the key thing here is that it's not gonna stop working, but we are gonna get no more security updates and we are not gonna get any more support for that as well too. So it's a really bad position to be in. My blog post links in the upgrade pass. If you're on this today, definitely want to assess this in your environment or your customer environments and make sure they're upgraded by this particular date and ideally as soon as possible. Shifting into the last section here with Microsoft Copilot, we're talking about the general availability of agents in Copilot. I talked about this briefly last month as part of their announcements with Copilot Wave 2 and more specifically with Copilot and SharePoint. But this is using Copilot Studio to go ahead and build out an agent within your Microsoft environment that performs some type of automation flow. Could act as a chat bot, could leverage your SharePoint document libraries and all the documents there to source up information. Or in this example, as you're seeing kind of in this workflow, it's reading an email that's coming through and being able to perform some type of action here with the large language model on the back end. So I'm gonna probably do another video specifically about this because there's a lot to unpack here, but it's rolling out now in tenants that have co-pilot licensing and they plan to have 100% availability by the end of November.
Check out my blog if you want to see this full video and more information about this particular announcement. Next one here is this summarization in Edge and user prompt suggestions. This is something that they had previously, they temporarily removed and is available here for the web-based version. This is a great example that they show in the screenshot because it's allowing you to use Copilot to basically summarize a Wikipedia page and get up the clip notes on that. So it's a great example to kind of uh, leverage as far as that iteration. But timelines on this one will be early November, be complete by mid-November on reintroducing this in the Edge browser. Next one here is giving users the capability within the biz chat function there, the copilot.microsoft.com or microsoft365.com forward slash chat capability to create charts, graphs, and data analysis. If you've used Copilot within Excel, you kind of have an, an understanding of what this looks like, but it's cool that they're bringing this into the chat functionality too, where they already were doing things like image creation, you know, that you could use using Dolly with the back end. Uh, timelines on this one's mid-November and it will be complete by late November. Very last feature here, kind of something we all saw coming, right? This is a new support assistant feature and help that you can leverage. It is going to be available for everybody, not just people with a Copilot license, at least as it looks right now, but it's giving you the capability to kind of chat with the Copilot experience here as far as the help desk goes. And you can ask it questions about basic break fix items, troubleshooting, things like that. Be interested to see how far they take this. You know, I'd love to still be able to contact a support agent. Looks like you can still do that here, but it is a first line of defense for them, which, you know, obviously makes sense just from a regular business use case. Timelines for this one is going to happen early November and be complete by late May. Okay guys, that's everything I had for you today. If you like this content, want to get these monthly updates, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on those notifications if you haven't already. Otherwise, check out my last month's video on the September updates to get all the way caught up and comment below with anything that you're most excited about from the updates that we covered today. I'll see you guys next week.